Shalom. We give praise on the Guru Shi Halbu Shema Hushabu Shema Kakadash. In the Brahms, the hours of apostles of great millstone to me, truth and peace, the citations to the whole planet. And, um, yeah, man, that was spontaneous. Listen, like, literally, <laughs> I went outside to go have a look at the chariots, and then that's when scripture started coming to my head. So I'll start with the first scripture that came to my head, which was. Isaiah 66 and 15, and it says, <clears throat> For behold, the Lord Yahweh above Shem HaShem will come with fire, and with his chariots, like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And we got to keep in mind, it says, and with his chariots, like a whirlwind. And you got to remember, the prophets, basically, um, they use similitudes, or basically describes what they saw with the vocabulary they had back then or with the things that they knew back then. So a chariot back then would be a form of transportation or a vehicle. And you know what, let me get that let me get that scripture man. So you know Hosea twelve and ten and this is I've also spoken by the prophets. And I'll multiply visions and use similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. <clears throat> and like it also makes mention, chariots, like I said, transportation, a vehicle. And just like our king said, man, Psalm 68 and 17, and it says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord Yahweh is among them, as in Sinai. In the holy place. <laughs> so going back to what, what I said about similitudes, like I said, <laughs> a chariot would be transportation or vehicle. So you could even read Psalm 16 and 17 like this. The vehicles of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. So yeah, man, literally. The angels have vehicles or transportation. And in the scriptures, they're known as clouds. They're known as um, wheels. They're known as, um, I think it's ch cherubims, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, you know what, let me get it. Ezekiel 1. And 16. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let me start up here. Where is it? Here we go. Ezekiel 1 and 4. And this is in the looked, And behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. And this is going to... <laughs> Those vehicles or the chariots. And it says, A brightness was about it, and out of the mist of, as the colour of amber, so like a fiery colour, and out of the mist of the fire, also out of the mist of came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Meaning, when these angels came down with these ministers, they took the appearance of a man not just any man the sons of god or the israelite man or the negroes latinos hispanics and native americans including the mexicans and similar indians and there's examples of this basically angels coming down and taking the appearance of a man <clears throat> and let me get um Raphael man What's it called again? Um, I am. Uh, told it twelve, and yeah, here we go. Yeah, told it twelve and fifteen. It says, "I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayer of the saints, and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One." And yeah, man, it seems that Raphael 
holds that sense 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 being um a golden sense filled with um what's it called odors being the prayer of the saints and it says then they both were troubled and fell upon their faces for they feared but he said unto them fear not for it shall go well with you <clears throat> praise the power therefore for not of any favor of mine but by the will of our power i came wherefore praise him forever all these days i did appear unto you but i did neither eat nor drink but ye did see a vision so yeah it looked it looked like he was he was like a, a, a normal man it basically made them see him eating and drinking but really it was just a vision so they were deceived and it says now therefore give God thanks for I go up to him that sent me but write all these things which are done in a book <clears throat> and literally <laughs> Raphael appeared unto them as a man but like it also makes mention in verse 22 and it said then they confessed the great and wonderful works of the power and how the angel of the Lord had appeared unto them so the angel of the Lord appeared but in the appearance of a man and the same with um acts chapter one and nine and it says and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight being a vehicle or his transportation or a so-called UFO, or by today's standards, they would say a flying saucer or a spaceship. <laughs> and so then while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and this being two angels, man, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahweh shall which is taken up from you into heaven, so... So come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So that's another example of the angel of the Lord appearing as men unto the sons of God. <laughs> and then we also got this. Here we go, Second Maccabees 10. In 29, and this is but when the battle went strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon horses with, bri with bridles of gold, <clears throat> and two of them led the Jews, and took Maccabees betwixt them and covered him on every side, weapons and kept him safe, but shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies, so that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble, they were killed. And you know what? <laughs> it also makes mention. Let me, you know what? Let me get it. Isaiah 29 and 6. Like it says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord Yahweh Shema, which shall host with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of the violent and fire. And yeah, when the Lord comes back to the earth. Is coming with his chariots to do what? To bring that fire. And also when <clears throat> the angel of the Lord appeared to fight, what did they come with? They came with that thunder, with that lightning, man. And you know what? Let me get this. Revelation 1 says, so Behold, he cometh with clouds, being the chariots, or them vehicles. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him being those Roman centurions. Which they're going to see him because reincarnation. And no kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so a man. And the word wail means to cry out with grief. And the reason why they're going to cry out with grief is because the Lord's coming back to execute judgment. Revelation 19 and 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. 
and in righteousness, who doeth judge and make war. <clears throat> his eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So yeah, when the Lord comes back, he's coming to execute judgment. Hence why he also makes mention in Isaiah 66 and 15, that the Lord's going to plead with all flesh. <clears throat> which the word plead goes into judge. And also, let me get this. Um... Second Edges 13 and 1, and it says, And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, it's so basically a vision. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man went strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. And this is the return of the Lord Yahweh Shai, or the Son of God, or the people of the world called him Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and like it says, that man went strong with the thousands of heaven, and we know this is the Lord because Revelation 19. And let me start at 13, basically carrying on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, being those chariots, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And if you noticed, in um, Acts 1 and 10, it made mention of the two men that stood in white apparel, in that white, in that fine linen, man. It's, they were the saints, man. <clears throat> but carrying on. Verse 4 it says, And once above the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feedeth the fire. And that's going into those laser beams. And you're probably thinking, his voice. And that's basically going into how these chariots are like bodies. For example, we have a spirit and we have this terrestrial body. It's the, ter it's the spirit that controls these terrestrial bodies that we're in now. And it's the same with, um, with those celestial bodies. Them vehicles are like bodies. So when he's talking about the fire came out of his mouth, going into where the fire stuck in the weather chariot shoots this fire. So when he's talking about the fire coming out of his mouth, he's talking about coming out of the mouth of the chariot. <clears throat> and carrying on, it says, And after this I beheld on Lord there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And they are going into those nations that are going to be joined together when they go to fight against America. And it says, But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. And this isn't talking about an actual mountain, it's talking about his vehicle, his transportation. And the reason why it's compared onto a mountain is because of how big it was. And like it says, But I would have seen the regional place where the hill was graven, and I could not. Meaning, it was so big, Ezra or Edress couldn't see the beginning nor the end of the Lord's chariot. And that's another reason why it makes mention in Revelation 1 and 7. Every eye shall see him. Why? Because his chariot's going to cover the whole face of the entire earth. And to get that, Zechariah. Let me say, then I turned and lifted up my eyes and behold, it's like here. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll, the length of his twenty cubits, the breadth of ten cubits. And this flying roll going into a, a chariot, man, a vehicle. And for example, in today's um, society or today's age, a flying roll, that, that would be called um, a cigar-shaped UFO. Or a scroll UFO, which they've been seen. <clears throat> And it says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goes forth of the face of the whole earth, yet being the Lord's chariot. 
For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off, as on this side according to it, and everyone that serves shall be cut off, as on that side according to it. Yeah, because the Lord's coming to judge and make war. <clears throat> So Daniel 2nd Edward 13 and 18 says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet there was fight going into those nations, man. <clears throat> and it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he never lifted off his hand, nor held saw, nor any instrument of war. And the reason why is because he was sitting comfy in his chariot or in his vehicle. And it says, But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. And out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests going into those laser beams that's going to come out of them chariots. Like you see in the movies, you see that hot fire c coming out, like a thingy, um, like lines being like lasers. And it says, And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. And burned them up every month so that upon a sudden of a new multitude, nothing was to be perceived, only the dust and some of the smoke. And I saw this, I was afraid. So yeah, they got burnt up, man. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what happened. And to link it all together, let me head on over to verse 31. And it says, And one shall und undertake to fight against another, one sea against another, one place against another, one people against another, one realm against another. So you have one kingdom against another kingdom, being the Lord's kingdom versus Esau's kingdom. <clears throat> and it says, And that time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the, and the signs shall happen which I showed you before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. So yeah, when he finished this course, man, when he finished the work which his father gave him to do, and he went up into a cloud or a chariot, it says that when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own and leave the battle they have one against another. Going into World War Three. So instead of them fighting each other, they're going to turn and fight against the Lord. And it says, And the new multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come, to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall come, and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and building like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into tempest, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts, and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labour by the law which is like unto me. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered together another piece of a multitude unto him, Going into the northern kingdom. <clears throat> going into... That's basically going into... How the Native Americans... Or the Aztecs, the Mayans... Or the what's it called? The Simna Indians... Got over to the land of... Asaref, which now is called America. <clears throat> but carrying on... To basically link it all together. Verse 49... And it says, Now when he destroyed the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. So, <laughs> yeah, the Lord's going to be fine against these nations, man. He ain't going to be fine against these these demons, like, like these religions will have you think. It's fine against these nations that are on this earth. And let me close out on this. Isaiah 34 and 1, it says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is in the, therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord, Yehovah, Shem HaShai, and indignation going into righteous anger is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. So there you go, man. When the Lord comes to fight against these nations, he's going to destroy them. And that's where it talks about the Lord coming with fire with his chariots, like a whirlwind to render his rebuke with flames of fire. <clears throat> but yeah, man, I hope this was at the phone. I want to give praise on him. Glory to you, Allah, Shema, 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 Shema